banks are collapsing, real estate market you predicted a year ago on this show is, uh, you know, really imploding faster. And you said the big thing would be commercial real estate. Now that's accelerating. Uh, they're openly announcing youth brigades, red and black uniforms. We're going to play some video of that. We found a new bill Burmas did earlier. He's going to be covering tonight, 9 to midnight, here on uh, PrisonPlanet.tv. We're going to cover that with you, where they openly say again, national compulsory service. Uh, it's Even though you and I have predicted this is coming, and many others have seen you know, the tyranny, it's still hard to believe it's actually manifesting. Gerald Salente. It is hard to believe it. It began really under uh, in, in full blast under Bush with his top programs. And buying out, as we did with Bear Stearns, was that thirty billion they guaranteed that sale to? I believe it was J.P. Morgan to take over Fannie and Freddie, the uh, mortgage companies, owning AIG, the world's largest insurance company, now Chrysler and GM. And as we know, the definition of the merger of corporate and state powers is called fascism, according to Mussolini, who knew a thing or two about it. And that's what we're seeing now, the first stages of what we're calling fascism light. And you're pointing it out very well with the uniforms, the compulsory service, the compulsory service, and, and all of the steps that they're taking, where the government is now infringing deeper and deeper into our lives to the point where now one out of every six dollars uh, uh, that are being spent in this country is coming from the government. So it, it's a trend that happened really in, in a little over a year where America went from the world's greatest entrepreneurial co country where no one was too big to save where or to fail where now the rest of us are too small to save, and we're becoming servants of of the uh, the major companies. Again, current events form future trends. We just look at the expansion plans for Walmart. It's very ironic. They used to say, "As goes General Motors," or "What's good for General Motors is good for America." And now we can say, "As goes Walmart, so goes America." Walmart's crew, well, they're going to create another, they're bragging about it, 22,000 jobs, whoopee. Compare those to the jobs we used to have when this country had a manufacturing base. Well, Walmart, I mean, don't they on the whole uh, food chain, they fill kind of the vulture or maggot position that, sure, the vultures and maggots do well when the rest of the economy's dead, but only for a time. Well, that, well that's exactly it, and the kind of jobs they they produce. I mean, who really wants to you know, go to college or anywhere else, or even get a high school degree, and then be relegated to working at Walmart? You know, and, what and do you I, do? I know a lot of folks with college degrees who are working at the grocery store or Walmart, and they're not too happy. That's something else you talk about. It's the college bubble. But go ahead. So what we're doing is when you hear these advertisements, Alex, where Walmart brags about you know everyday low prices. Well, sure, every day low, we're, we're, we're turning into a Walmart economy. Every day low prices. With every day low prices comes every day low paying jobs. With every day low paying jobs comes every day low quality. So every day America is sinking lower and lower. The GM bailout in this country, it should be, I believe that these people in Congress from the president down, should be br being brought up on criminal charges for abrogating our Constitution and becoming so involved in private industry to the levels that they've become. And when you read their, their thin defense for it, they use quotes like, well, we had to do this, and we hope to be... A what do you mean you had to do this? Who said you had to do this? Certainly not the American people. Well, notice, Gerald Salente, that the more they do, the worse it gets for all of us, but the better for them. Uh, and, and, and this is my question for you, and then finish the point you were making, is that we have the IMF and World Bank bragging about imploding third world nations by design, buying off their governments, destroying confidence in the supposed recovery, then consolidating even more. 
the big government system, the big central banks offshore, George Soros saying he's having a great crisis, culmination of his life, they're bragging that they love it, everything's falling apart, because then they are flush with all the fiat currency and credit they create out of nothing. They get to buy up all the real assets. They get to pose as the saviors of the crisis they created. They're openly announcing a new bank of the world will pay our carbon taxes to. They're telling us the new recovery is lower quality, less jobs, less freedom, less mobility. So they're advertising bondage and chains as the recovery. I mean, they know ex these people are crazy like a fox, or do you disagree? Well, you know, to some extent, yes and no, in the sense that I, I think they're crazy like a fox in that the objective is to take control of our lives, and they're doing it in every way possible. And they use these crises, not that they're so much as manufactured, but they exploit them for everything that they're worth. And that, as Rahm Emanuel had, had, had noted, that, you know, you never let a good crisis, you know, be squandered. And, and that's what they're really doing as we see it. The second thing, Alex, is in building on what you said, is one of our forecasts, as you know, we're calling for the bailout bubble. And, what, and just briefly, we had first the dot com. I got to stop you. You said that first. I remember like a year ago or nine, ten months ago. Now they're calling it bailout bubble on the news without giving you credit. Sorry, go ahead. Well, that happens a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, so, so now the bailout first that we had, well, not first, but the most recent was the was the dot com bubble. The dot com bubble burst. Five trillion dollars is lost in the markets. Rather than let their too big to fail friends lose big money, they created the other bubble. They lowered interest rates to 46 year lows, flooded the marketplace with cheap money. Again, every time they do that, they devalue our standard of living. But they created the real estate bubble. Go out and borrow on your house, it's a piggy bank. You want to build that new addition, go on a vacation, buy a new car. It's cheap. Just go do it. They created the next bubble. That bubble burst. And, of course, they love to blame the little people, not talking about ever these leverage buyout firms like Carlisle and, and Blackstone and Cerebus, on and on, who bought companies for virtually no money down worth tens of billions of dollars. That was where the real credit crisis happened, by the way. And, by the way, before you uh, – I forget. Let me bring this up. I'm sure you've seen all the news – where they do stress tests on healthy banks, and the government says, no, you haven't done well, so the bank plunges, and then the government basically hands it over to Carlisle. I mean, this is just piracy. Well, again, look who's involved with Carlisle. Look at the members of the Carlisle group. You know, they're, 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 it's, 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 the Bush, it's, it's the Bush wing of the mafia. You know, so as we look at the players, you know, where the money goes, follow the money. So now we have the bailout bubble. And this really, what we're talking about now is that, and building on what you said, now when this bubble bursts, and it's going to burst, when this one bursts, there's no way to reinflate another bubble. This because is the now, mega bubble? This is the fake complete, the coup de grace? This is the final bubble? The final bubble, because now what's happened is, unlike those other bubbles, our economic superstructure has been changed because now government has printed phantom money out of thin air, based on nothing, producing practically nothing, has taken equity positions in private enterprise with executive control and management powers over these corporations. So now when this breaks, there's nothing left to refill it. And here's the next step. With each failure, they create an even bigger failure. We are concerned that after this bubble breaks, the next crisis they create will be taking us to war. They do it all the time. Stay there, Gerald Salente. Break that down when we get back. And by the way, what he's saying mirrors what Paul Watson wrote about six months ago. The Rand Corporation... This was big news in Europe, not on the news here. Said we need a World War II size global crisis to be able to get us out of this. And they call it a bubble. So uh, they're certainly doing some trends forecasting over at Rand in a very wicked way.
Let me tell you a little bit about one of our great sponsors, HomeGain.com. This is the place to get you started buying or selling a home, finding a realtor, and getting any real estate questions answered. Go to HomeGain.com and see what I'm talking about. All you need to do is type in your home address and you will get an instant free estimate of your home's value online. This is a great way to be able to monitor the value of your home. And again, it's absolutely free. There are tons of tools to help you. For instance, if you want to remodel your home, go to HomeGain.com. Use their Home Sale Maximizer to help you determine which home improvements can most increase your home's value before you put it on the market. For 10 years, these folks have been helping home sellers and buyers. Visit their link at InfoWars.com. Look for Max, the orange home gain gorilla, to help you with any real estate needs you might have. You'll love this site. It's homegain.com, H-O-M-E-G-A-I-N.com. Check them out today.